Well, hello, my lovely YouTube family. <laughs> How are you guys doing? Oh my god, is that a super chat already? Um, shoot. Okay, see on this screen, oh, if I click it, well, it's, oh, Alex. <laughs> Thank you so much to Alex for starting things off with a very generous super sticker already. Thank you so much. <laughs> um, okay, guys, well, welcome to Shiroka Laka, which is deep in the Rodope Mountains here in Bulgaria. This is a very small village town that uh, right in front of me says has been around for over 200 years. So uh, I'm super excited to give you guys a little tour of around here. Oh, hello. Hello to Michael. Hello to Mitos. Hello to everybody for coming out. Uh, I'm really excited to be doing this. Uh, but yeah, I've been here for about three days now, have to think. And it has been such a different change of pace with, you know, obviously the bigger centers that I have uh, been to. And it's just been really nice to just like relax. Oh, from Marco. Oh, geez, you guys, these, move, these are moving so quickly, sadly, that I'm not uh, being able to read them. But thank you so much, Marco. I really appreciate it. Uh, speaking of which, the Bulgaria postcards I hear are coming in. So if you're in my postcard club, expect one from Bulgaria fairly soon. Greetings from Dublin. Hello. I think we've got people from uh, a whole bunch of different uh, places today. So yeah, just to give you guys a little bit more of an introduction, I've been here for about three days. I'm staying in the loveliest little hotel for like $30 a night, like my own room, everything, which includes breakfast. <laughs> so if you thought that like Varna and Sofia were already inexpensive in comparison to like Western standards here in the mountains, you know, it is significantly less. Privet Alexei, hello to Bill. Oh, Larry, thank you so much for the super sticker. Thank you so much. Thank you guys so much for all the support. My God, we're like, what? How many, two minutes in and you guys are just, you guys are incredible. So thank you. Thank you so much. Greetings from Korea. Hello from Australia. Greetings from Canadian Rockies, Texas, England. Oh my God, you guys. I actually can't believe, um, you know, how, how many different corners of the world we have uh, that come out to these. Dallas, Texas, amazing. Greetings from a Bulgarian in Spain. <laughs> amazing. Okay, so before we start the tour, I just want to say that this is probably going to be a shorter sort of stream because like it's, it's a small town. So, you know, there's only so much I can say <laughs> um, unless you guys just have like a, a lot of questions. Uh, hello to Daryl. Um, it probably will be under an hour. So just keep that in mind if you have any kind of um, questions. So uh, before we start walking around, let me flip the camera and show you guys what I'm seeing. I'm sitting in a little park. Somebody said, come to Plovdiv. I was just there and that's going to be my next video. So I hope you guys are excited. Uh, speaking of videos though, I'm actually not gonna have one posted um, tomorrow as I usually do on Mondays because the internet at my uh, hot, or hotel is quite slow. So it is probably gonna come out on Thursday. Aw, Daryl, thank you so much for the super sticker. <laughs> that's so sweet of you, thank you. Um, yeah, so I'm in this like little square. This is basically the uh, center of town. So first and foremost, I think I'll show you guys our little central hub and then we'll go to the left, come back to the center, go to the right, come back to the center because that's, that's, that's as big as this town is. Uh, thank you so much, Mitos. That's really sweet of you. Okay, IP, can you greet me? Hello. <laughs> okay, so this is Saturday night. So as you guys can see, the town is popping. <laughs> this really is um, where everybody comes to uh, go to a restaurant if they would like to do so, because some of the other smaller towns around here are literally only like 50 people and have no restaurants. So uh, Shirokolaka has about 300, you know, permanent residents. So, uh, you know, this is the place that has a lot more amenities in the area. 
this place right in front of us is actually a sort of like corner store you can get like even drinks there stuff like i mean coffee costs like 50 cents for a really good coffee and then uh, just across this way is kind of the town center that yellow sign if you guys can see uh, basically says that you know celebrating 200 years of shiroko laka um, 1818 to 2018 so they're 202 years old hello from bangalore india hello <laughs> and then uh over here just this building up here is actually the hotel that i am staying at it's called hotel kalina it's a family-run hotel and i would absolutely recommend it uh, if you guys come down here the staff is amazing let me just jump across the street because i'm literally in the middle of the street right now <laughs> um but yeah there's a lot of uh, folklore tradition here you can get some really uh beautiful souvenirs as well a lot of like hand-painted stuff oh <laughs> somebody said my internet connection is really good yeah you know so with my phone data my internet connection is thankfully really good but just the wi-fi um unfortunately you know where i am it's just you know not fast enough for uploading as quickly as i'd like um but yeah here's my hotel across the street their restaurant is also amazing i get a free breakfast there but i've gone there for lunch and dinner and it is so good uh, let's see here the quality of the food i'm telling you guys here is on a whole other level because they do get it from a uh, local sort of farmers here uh, somebody just asked what is the temperature here uh, good question right now it's like six o'clock so a little cool but still you know be warm kind of drops to maybe um but yeah, as I was saying, uh, lots of fresh produce. Uh, just the way they cook here is really tasty as well. They have like, um, you know, fire pit sort of barbecues. You can do, you know, fresh, fresh roasted meat and vegetables, all that kind of stuff. So honestly, just to come here to eat <laughs> is amazing. <laughs> uh, patatnik, yes, I did try patatnik. Uh, the first one though, guveshi, I have not tried. What is your favorite meal in Shirokalaka? Well, that patatnik was really good. It's like a potato sort of dish and it has like cheese on top. That was really, really good. And then, oh, thank you to Kevin Bowles from Chrissy and Kevin in the UK. Thank you guys, that's so sweet. Um, yes, that was really good. And then the first night that I came here, I got like barbecue um, of like a whole platter of veggies and uh, chicken and garlic bread and it was so good oh thank you to stephen winchester for the super sticker thank you <laughs> sending everybody kisses today <laughs> okay so i want to flip the camera here and show you guys how gorgeous it is here little stream and then building up on the side of well, i guess the mountain is these amazing traditional Rhodopian homes and these are still the original houses obviously with like you know some renovations some updates but it's basically as it was uh, in the last you know couple hundred years so if you really wanted a taste of traditional mountain culture in Bulgaria I would say that this is definitely one of the top places that you should see Oh, Daryl asks, why do you think Bulgaria isn't more of a travel destination? Um, that's a good question, because uh, the more time that I've spent here, I'm like, why isn't it, you know, a top travel destination? There really is so much to see. And I think it is just because not enough people are talking about it. Like literally since I've been posting about it, I've had probably at least five people reach out to me saying how they are actually serious about coming here. One person literally is here right now <laughs> um, who said that it was because of what I posted that they got inspired to come here. So that's why I'm really passionate about uh, showcasing these types of places because, you know, people just don't know. Uh, yes, Tom Harrelson, I am streaming really live right now. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's a very tourist friendly country. 
as well, which is also why it's shocking that they don't get more tourists because like people speak English really well here. Um, the prices are amazing. There's so much to see and do. So honestly, it beats me. <laughs> Aw, thank you, Pamela, <laughs> finding my uh, uh, videos uh, while researching. Yeah, so I mean, I'm probably going to be putting out like a minimum of six or seven videos about Bulgaria. So I, I hope I hope that will help. <laughs> so let's slip here. Yeah, where we just came from was down there. And uh, on our way back, we'll actually go up some of these side roads so you could get a closer look to some of the houses. So of course we might get some looks because uh, <laughs> we're live streaming and uh, probably don't get a lot of that here. <laughs> I actually, uh, you know, went on YouTube and typed in Shirakalaka uh, to see, you know, if anybody else had put out content about this place. And uh, no, nope, not really any kind of like, come see this place sort of travel content. Just a few uh, videos about the music that they have here. That's amazing. Uh, Mohammed asks, are there motels and hotels? Um, well, I guess it'd be more of a hotel than a motel. Uh, here in Shirakalaka, there's probably at least five or six. So uh, definitely, you know, choice of different sort of accommodations. But uh, up here, where we'll be going in a minute, um, there's actually a four star hotel. It's the nicest hotel um, in, in this whole area. It's called, uh, I just think, Shiroka Laka Hotel. And their rooms are just like beautiful and they have a spa and restaurant. So if you were okay with spending about $100 a night, I think that's kind of their entry level sort of rooms. Uh, Andrew Wang asks, how's the coronavirus situation in Bulgaria? Um, I've talked about this uh, before, uh, but just to touch on it briefly, uh, basically their cases, I would say, compared to the rest of Europe especially, are quite low for their population. It's usually around 100 cases a day and like very low number of deaths, which is, you know, the main thing that's good. So, um, yeah, overall they're open to tourism and uh, if you're in a country that's allowed to come here basically you just have to worry about you know wearing a mask when you're in, in any indoor spaces but that's that's really about it hello from Romania you have a huge fan base here we're waiting for you in our country thank you so much I was there a few years ago but I definitely have to come back oh from Vladimir confession time you're my inspiration for planning a trip to Moldova and Ukraine oh well I, I do hope you get to uh, go once things uh once things settle down here. So let me flip here. So we're just gonna go up here and I'm gonna show you guys the uh, school where uh, they're known for this uh, folklore sort of singing. It's actually a sort of bag type sort of music that they're known for. <laughs> Shigeru, <laughs> thank you so much for your support and thank you for staying up late once again. I know it is like, 1 a.m. or whatever it is in Tokyo, so thank you. <laughs> um, hello from Lavec, Bulgaria. Wow, I'm, I'm actually having more Bulgarians come out too. I appreciate that because so many of you have actually given me fantastic suggestions for things to see and do. So I really always appreciate uh, when locals give me suggestions. So thank you. Um, but yeah, actually, <laughs> this road right here was completely beat up. Uh, yesterday when I was going up this road they were in the middle of paving it but see today they're already all done so they worked they worked very fast here <laughs> I think if you lived in these kinds of towns just in general to survive you would have to be okay with manual labor and probably having a job somehow in that sphere because I doubt that there's you know a lot of office jobs <laughs> so to say <laughs> So here we are coming up to it. It's just this building in front. Let me see. In Romania, we'll have around 30 to 32 degrees Celsius at this time. Wow, well, that, uh, that, that's even better than here. Um, but yeah, so uh, what's especially great about coming to the Rodope Mountains is that it's really this mountain range in comparison to all the different mountain ranges that they got um, in Bulgaria or like nature reserves, there's a lot, <laughs> is that this area is really known 
for the traditional sort of villages. So if that's of interest to you, I would say that the Rodope Mountains would be, you know, your best option. If you're looking for hiking, I have heard that like uh, Piran and Rila Lakes is the best. So I do think that I'll be making a stop in Rila uh, maybe in a couple of weeks, but uh, Piran, I don't know, I haven't decided because I'm already here for almost like two months. So to add Piran would probably add another week. So we'll see. Um, на каком языке там привичие говорят? Ну, больше всего на английский для меня, но есть какие-то люди, которые постарше, и они, они на русский. So here we are, guys. We are here in front of the folklore sort of institute. I'm pretty sure it's similar to a university type of thing. Uh, Elise, if I'm saying your name right, sorry, <laughs> would be nice to interview locals like I did before. I would like to, and honestly, I almost wish that they would come into my videos without me going up to them, because I almost feel a little weird sometimes, especially since it's, you know, this whole, like, corona thing, um, you know, to, to directly go up to people unless they're for sure cool with it. But yeah, hopefully I will have more locals that are interested um, in uh, being a part of my videos, because it is nice to have that perspective as well. So this is the four star hotel. It'd actually be interesting to know how busy they are right now because at my guest house, I think that uh, I'm like one of three people staying there and there's like 30 rooms. So <laughs> being the most expensive hotel, I wonder how busy they are. Uh, but yeah, so the ladder uh, or the stairs to that is right across from this um, school and uh, it would be really cool to actually experience a live performance of the singing because I've heard the recordings in all the different restaurants but I haven't heard it live so maybe maybe some other time all right oh look at this you guys <laughs> isn't it just amazing to be around mountains and trees when it just completely surrounds you. <laughs> it feels like skyscrapers. Uh, Rila Lakes are a complete tourist trap. Either go to Rasta or somewhere in the Rodopes. Yeah, I mean, I, I heard that Rila is obviously the most uh, touristy sort of place, but when I see pictures of the Rila Lakes, I, I really want to go there. And of course, the monastery is, you know, probably one of the most uh, well-known places as well. So I just feel like it's kind of like, you know, the Taj Mahal or the Eiffel Tower. You kind of just have to see it. <laughs> um, but yeah, I haven't decided actually if I'm going to rent a car to go see it or there are a few trains that will take you there, but I just don't know, um, you know, what the public transit is like around there. So having rented a car now, <laughs> uh, I actually feel so much more confident with, uh, driving. I'll have a whole video on driving and what that's been like uh, here. But uh, here, let me actually flip here. This is one of the roads that leads to where I went yesterday. And you really have to be okay with mountain driving if you come to these parts. Like you really have to take it slow because there's all these like twists and turns and everything. <laughs> uh, and you really have to be watching and you know, Make sure that you can squeeze by any of the big trucks that are coming by. So now let's go back this way. Сколько стоит бензин в Болгарии? О, я правда не знаю. Я просто сделала, ну, как fill to full. Не знаю, как перевести на русский. И для мою маленькую машину более-менее такую на половину было 30 канадских долларов. Но сколько за литр или за галлон, извините, я не могу <laughs> вспомнить. Uh, yeah, but just to kind of finish off about talking about renting a car is that on these mountain roads, the hardest thing is that uh, like people will try and pass you because either they are really confident in their driving or just super impatient. So that was probably the scariest part for me of like these people trying to constantly pass me on these roads. <laughs> oh, 
I'm happy to hear that a lot of people actually think that the real lakes are worth it because I do think that they will be worth it. What are my plans for the rest of the day? Well, it's about six o'clock right now. So after I finish up chatting with you guys, I am probably gonna go get some supper and then I'm gonna have to pack my bags because I'm leaving early in the morning. And uh, tomorrow I have a super packed day where I am going to probably like three different nature attractions. Uh, somebody had actually said to make sure I visit the caves in this area and that is what I'm uh, planning to do tomorrow. Um... <laughs> Hello from UK, Steve Parker. <laughs> wow, we got almost 300 people here already. That is amazing. <laughs> um... Okay, let's see here. Want those for me or for somebody else? <laughs> All right. So here we are. I'm gonna walk a little ways down there to show you guys the houses, but my service actually gets patchy if I go too far that way. Just in the center, it's really good, so I won't go too far. Um, somebody asks about the weather. I had mentioned it before, but right now it's about like plus 13, so still honestly fairly warm for this type of year so I'm I'm quite happy <laughs> I know that uh in Toronto they were saying they got hail the other day and it's like really cold so I uh I'm totally cool with being here instead <laughs> oh wow greetings from Zhitomir Ukraina Privet. <laughs> hello from Brazil wow amazing Of course, some of the houses here, as you guys can see, are kind of, you know, falling apart. Probably wouldn't meet the full <laughs> safety standards. Oh, <laughs> hey girl, Anila, Eating to Live channel. You guys should totally check out her channel. She uh, makes incredible Indian food. And if you're like me and loves Indian food, but has no idea how to cook it, you should definitely check out her channel. Thanks for coming out, girl. <laughs> Watching from Salt Lake City. Hello from Toronto, Canada. Hello from India, Israel. My goodness. Hello, everyone. All right, I'm just going to pop over here. Oh, Michael, enjoy this so much. A little help for your dinner tonight. Thank you so much, Michael. Thank you for coming out. I hope your plans uh, to go to Ukraine are still full steam ahead. What time is it? 9.33 a.m. Houston, Texas. Uh, it's, it's uh, I guess it's almost six o'clock i think <laughs> if i'm not mistaken oh wow hello from saskatchewan hello caesar <laughs> oh yeah look how tall these trees are beautiful from lake balt in hungary wow oh and they oh whoops <laughs> um yeah, it's, it's crazy with Europe right now because a lot of places are changing their uh, restrictions. But thankfully, over here in the Balkans, things have been quite steady. As far as I know, I haven't seen anybody like drastically changing their uh, rules because overall, uh, you know, the, the case numbers have been fairly low and quite around the same range. They haven't really spiked. So I'm actually really grateful to be in this area. Uh, Sunimation asks, when are you going to come back to Canada? Um, <laughs> oh, thank you, JD Whitfield. Enjoy your live stream. Spot an Osmo Pocket, thanks to you. Oh, I'm so glad. First of all, thank you so much for the support. But yeah, the DJI Osmo Pocket is my go-to camera. I don't think I will ever stop using it because there's just nothing else like it. Obviously, what I'm using right now, the... DJI Ohm 4 is fantastic for cell phones, but if you want a really small, powerful, <laughs> little travel camera, or I mean, you can use it for anything, DJI Osmo Pocket is my go-to sort of camera. Uh, but I was uh, saying about when am I gonna <laughs> go back to Canada? I have no idea, to be honest. Uh, I plan to probably spend at least six to eight months on the road, so, I left in the end of July, so I'd probably be staying till at least March, most likely. Uh, I don't really see a point of 
going back early when it's like midwinter in Canada. I'd much rather be in Europe or Asia, ideally, if they open. So yeah, I'll, uh, I'll be here. Thank you, Greenview. I appreciate that. <laughs> oh, let's see here. What has been your favorite place in Bulgaria from Tom? Um, well, I mean, this is definitely right up there. Just all the nature so far that I've seen in Bulgaria, I have really, really loved. But uh, as far as cities go, I'd probably actually say Plovdiv which is the last city that I was in. Like I mentioned before, I don't have the video out yet. It'll be out um, later this next week, but it was incredible. <laughs> like if you guys come here, you have to come to Plovdiv. Let's see here. Um, let's see here. Oh, somebody had asked, uh, I saw the question, which country has the best coffee? And that's a good question. Hmm. Well, I mean, I, I do like Italian coffee when I like buy the beans, but uh, as far as like coming to a country and they uh, make it like here, as far as coffee shops go, you know, Ukraine actually had some really good ones. <laughs> Strangely enough, that was the first one that popped in my head. I remember I went to so many um, new coffee shops in Kiev and also in Lviv when I was there, and I was super impressed with the coffee. So just off the top of my head, that's that's where I would say. Strangely enough, who, who would think of Ukraine for coffee? But if you guys have been to Ukraine and tried the coffee, let me know if I'm not alone in that thinking. <laughs> Question, are the houses all the same color as they seem to be? Overall, yes. They are just like in that style because a lot of them are the original ones that were here. There's very few new builds as far as I can see. And somebody had asked, um, do I have any videos of Lviv? Yes, I think I have for sure one video, but I might even have two. No, just one. I have just one video of Lviv. <laughs> Asking if I take my sugar black or with cream from David. Usually black, sometimes cappuccinos. <laughs> Uh, somebody says, if you're, since you're in that any area, visit Trig Trigrad Gorge. I might, I just don't know if I'll have enough time because uh, one of the things that I want to do is go to Bacha Gorge, which I heard is beautiful. And I'm just going to spend um, a few nights there, I think. So if I had time, maybe I'll do the gorge, but I definitely want to see that Bacha Reservoir. Um... Okay, you know what guys, I think I'm going to give you one last look of this side of the town and then I'm going to turn around because I know the service does cut out <laughs> at some point. <laughs> Here we are. So yeah, very quiet, lovely, sleepy town. And uh, from some of the other small towns that I've been to in the area, one thing that I wonder is how some people not only build on like hills at the very top that have next to no roads <laughs> to them or like really sketchy roads and just like getting up and down that every single time that you need anything I guess you just have to basically stock up on everything for the most convenience I guess if you were a real hermit and didn't want to be around people that would be the perfect place to live but yesterday I was going through all these small towns and I was like looking at where these houses are and I'm like how how do they build up there and how do they just live up there <laughs> is my question. <laughs> Let me flip here. Yeah, people there have strong legs, exactly. I'm like, you don't need a gym if you <laughs> live somewhere like that. Uh, Daryl asks, how safe have you felt? Overall, very safe. I think yesterday was actually the day that I felt the least safe because the place that I planned on seeing ended up being a super random road where there was like no people around. You're in dense forest. And I kind of <laughs> went into the worst case scenario and started Googling, you know, what kind of wild animals around here. And there's bears, wolves, very scary things. And I was like, 
I suddenly don't feel like good about being in here. So I basically just turned around and didn't end up seeing what I wanted to see. Uh, so that's, that, that's the most safe I've actually unfelt, the most unsafe I felt in Bulgaria. It hasn't been because of people or any other issues. It's been in the forest scared of bears. <laughs> Uh, Tim Allen, I believe, had asked if anybody recognized me uh, through my channel. And funny enough, the two people that have, have been in Bulgaria. Like that first live stream in Sofia, if you guys were there, there were some people that recognized me, which was like so sweet. And then uh, when I was walking to the car rental agency in Plovdiv, another person recognized me. So <laughs> what are the chances that here in Bulgaria, <laughs> people would recognize me? Like I didn't know that before I even started filming here that I had many people who watched me there. So it was very, very cool. Uh, let me flip here. Somebody asked what my zodiac sign is. I'm an Aquarius, Leo ascendant, Aries moon. Just to give you the full picture. <laughs> Greetings from Ireland, wonderful program, thank you. Yeah, Michael, it, it is very squeezed into a small valley. But uh, when you guys watch my full length video, you will see like some small towns. <laughs> the place that I went yesterday was a village of 30 people. So I thought I lived in a small town in Saskatchewan of 800 people. And in comparison to some of these places, I, uh, I feel like I lived in a big city. <laughs> uh, Rose asked, which country are you that you travel to do you feel most safe in? Uh, definitely Japan. Japan wins like by a land, landslide. <laughs> because not only have I spent so much time there, but uh, just the sort of... What's the word I'm looking for? Social sort of rules of like, you know, wh what you do to be an acceptable human are <laughs> so strict that very few people would think of like robbing someone, of assaulting someone, of, you know, pulling a gun or something. It's an incredibly safe place. Look at all the firewood everywhere. I imagine that, yeah, in the winter here, it probably would get quite cold. And, uh, you know, I don't know how much electric heat the buildings have, so you'd probably have to have very... Oh, Rahul, thank you so much. Fantastic live stream. Appreciate your valuable insight into small town life in Bulgaria. Thank you so much. Thank you, Rahul. Thank you for always showing up to my lives. I really appreciate it. <laughs> so many of you who have, like showed up to all my lives like that really means a lot like I couldn't do these if you know people didn't show up or it wouldn't be the same so thank you to all of you for showing up um I think there was somebody who asked where do you plan to be um in the winter or something like that uh so yeah I, I do plan on being in Europe and most likely in the Balkans honestly until like the new year and my birthday because there's so much to see here and I actually heard that Bosnia and Herzegovina uh, opened to Canadians just in the last few weeks. So I, I have already kind of thought of going to like North Macedonia, Albania, maybe Kosovo and Serbia, but then Bosnia or Herzegovina as well. So I, I've got plenty on my plate for this winter because I do like to spend usually like a whole month if possible in each count in the, in each country as well i see no one around yeah there really isn't a lot of people around have you learned any bulgarian words or phrases i mean just very basic stuff like dobreden or blagadaria um, some of the words are similar to russian so you know when, when i read the cyrillic i can basically make them sound similar to the word or at least I hope so <laughs> uh, that's that's usually what I've been going off of but it's very basic um, oh somebody said Bosnia is great good to know um, okay so two people have asked about the hub thing it's not me anybody who like remotely thinks that that looks like me because somebody wrote like actress and youtuber like it's very sad people very sad so yeah i'm not going to address that again just so people know but it's like it's ridiculous oh ryan yes i am walking on a sidewalk and 
<laughs> there's no people around. Um, yes, Christy, it is crazy that we have technology that we can like talk to each other in different parts of the world and you know have it just be like a normal thing. I don't actually even know when live streaming kind of uh, began. Does anybody else know? Like, w when did it become common to live stream? Because I'm honestly just new to this whole scene and I, I actually don't know when, when it came around. Uh, Belgrade is the most amazing capital in Europe. Good to know. I, uh, I strangely don't know much about it. Um, drunk dude approaching from behind. I don't think he's drunk. I think he has a walking condition. So he's not drunk. Um, Romson asks, how much will it cost total your trip? Uh, I actually do like sharing these kinds of things with you guys so you can get an idea of, you know, how much things cost. But of course, it really depends on, you know, what level of accommodation and how fancy of restaurants and, you know, all the different comfort factors that are different with every person. Um, in Greece, I spent quite a bit. I spent about uh, $3,000 for the whole month a lot more than I wanted to spend but I felt like it was worth it because you know when are you in Greece when it's completely empty you know the incredible sights of Santorini so that's why I only spent a month in Greece because if I was to stay there longer for how much money I make right now that's just you know not the best idea <laughs> um, but here in Bulgaria I would say that I'm living much more comfortably than I was in Greece like I'm getting my own um, hotel and uh, Airbnbs basically the whole time and I've spent around two thousand dollars a month so I'm very happy with that <laughs> uh, Chinmay asks how many countries have you traveled till now uh, Bulgaria is my 32nd country Alina, would you ever like to travel first class from David? Of course I would. That's the goal. The goal is <laughs> to uh, either have like companies sponsor, you know, stuff or to, yeah, be able to make enough money to be able to afford that kind of lifestyle. I wouldn't say no to that. Though at the same time, I don't think I'd ever stop my more local sort of, you know, travel where I stay in these small places and it's not ritzy. Like, I can go, you know, both ways, but it would be nice <laughs> to stay at like five star hotels and travel first class on a plane because I've never actually done that. I've been upgraded, you know, on shorter flights or whatever for the first class where you just get a bit better food, a little bit more leg room, but it's not like the laying down sort of cabins and like the A plus service. So I definitely want to fly first class sometime. Um, Nat Geo needs you. Well, that would be cool. <laughs> uh, let me flip here, actually. Don't want to miss out on you guys seeing these gorgeous houses. And it's interesting because a lot of them are like the same height as well. I haven't seen any that are higher than three stories, I believe. Will you have a birthday bash live stream from Babes Paradise? I should. I don't know if I'll do it right on the day since I do plan on hopefully celebrating with friends, but I will definitely have a birthday bash live stream. Oh my God, that guy is stocked with wood. Look at his shed. <laughs> no, I have not tried garage cake. Is that uh, from... Uh, here is that Bulgarian for some reason I don't feel like I've uh, heard that name before how many families live in those houses I don't know to be honest I'm sure every single one is different but uh, yeah this this town has about 300 permanent residents and then a lot of the places are like guest houses and hotels too so that's why some of them are so much bigger yes I love Eva Zubek she is amazing Beautiful place. Enjoy the rest of your stream. Ciao. Bye, Ryan Cheek. I'll see you later. Long-term Canadian traveler and spent... Oh, I went away. Oh, Evgeny, спасибо большое. Thank you so much for the support. Спасибо. Oh, garage cake is Hungarian. Oh, interesting. No, I haven't had it before, so I'll, I'll try and keep that in mind. 
how do you keep from getting homesick? Um, well, <laughs> I've traveled so much and been in so many different places for such a long time that to be honest, I don't feel like I actually have a permanent home. <laughs> like when I go see my family, um, like my parents, you know, like because they're there, it feels like home, but I don't just like arrive in Saskatchewan and I'm like, oh, I'm home. <laughs> that was more like, you know, I, I used to live there. Oh, somebody said Shiroka Laka population is 500. Oh, okay. Well, I, I saw 300, but uh, I guess it's still around that sort of area. Um, so yeah, I wouldn't say that I actually have any place that I would really miss as like my one home. <laughs> so I guess that's what helps me from feeling homesick. I, I can feel at home anywhere. Okay, so we're back in the center, guys. It actually is pretty quiet for a Saturday night. Last night uh, seemed a lot busier. But yeah, so now that we've made it to the center, let's go the other direction. And that is where we will end the video for the night. These guys that are sitting in front have been here for about four hours, I swear to God. <laughs> so that's like the coffee row version of things. <laughs> this restaurant right in front of me, I think it's also a guest house, has the most incredible food. Uh, so I, this is, I think, where I'm gonna go for dinner tonight. It's so delicious. I think it's called uh, Filter, yeah, Filter or something. Or no. I forget what this place is called, but it's really good. <laughs> See here. Uh, somebody asked about COVID restrictions in small towns. Um, <laughs> See you, Anila. Thanks for coming out. Um, here in the small towns, it's real, literally you just have to wear a mask when you're in the grocery store. Like that's it. Even in the restaurants, you know, nobody is wearing a mask. Not even the waiters, <laughs> just in the uh, stores. Uh, David, what is the speed limit? That guy was speeding. Yeah, most people speed, I would say. I go above the speed limit and uh, I think people get annoyed because they think I'm going so slow. Uh, but here in the towns, it's a maximum of 50. And no, overall, I can't understand people on the street when they're talking because Bulgarian is quite different than Russian. Thankfully, I can read somewhat. That's my saving grace. <laughs> Look at this cute guest house. Don't you guys think this, this would be just like the perfect place to just unwind and get away from the city? Demeter asks, where am I going tomorrow? Uh, well, tomorrow I'm gonna go try and see those caves. Oh God, I hope you guys can hear me with whatever's happening over there. <laughs> um, yeah, so I'm gonna go try and see some caves. There's a uh, lookout point that I really wanna go to. And then uh, in the evening, I'm gonna go to that Vacha Reservoir. So that is my plan for tomorrow. I think this building up here is some kind of um, official building, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, the mayor's office. <laughs> I wonder actually, what do, you, what do you do when you're a mayor of a small town in Bulgaria? What is your day job? <laughs> oh, Nadja, thank you so much for promoting Bulgaria. My pleasure. Oh, see you later, Christy. Thanks for coming out. Is that place like below poverty? No, I actually don't think that the people here live in poverty. It's just not super fancy. Ah, oh, Shigeru. <laughs> Thank you so much. Cheers to you, beautiful small town and more than 350 viewers from Tokyo. Thank you so much. Oh, thanks for letting me know the microphone sometimes scratches. Hmm, how can I do this? Maybe if I go like this. <laughs> um, Um, I think wealthiest uh, 
man alive, I think was the name, saying that people prey on tourists here. That's definitely not the case. I have been here a month and a half and have not had any kind of issues. And it's quite obvious that I'm a tourist, obviously, as I'm live streaming in English and nobody gives you issues. I really want to dispel those myths that like, oh, you have to be so careful, like, you know, when you go to a foreign country because, you know, it's more dangerous than your home country. Like, I'm sorry, but USA especially is probably just as, you know, one of the most dangerous places outside of war-ridden third world countries. So even Toronto is like a dangerous city. So I think it's complete crap that uh, people think that these types of places are dangerous. Can you please shout out my friend Ben Dover? Hello, Ben Dover. <laughs> Um, Alex, they should be afraid of you coming from Toronto. Exactly. That's the way I actually uh, think that, you know, travel in general has made me feel safe because I actually think that if somebody put me in an uncomfortable situation, I don't know what I would do, but I would not be nice. <laughs> like there's been many times when, you know, somebody might have tried to rip me off or something and I, I do not take that uh, without a fight. So if anybody tried anything else, I wouldn't want to be them. <laughs> oh, look at this view, you guys. How pretty is that? How these are just like all of a sudden on my screen like I'll have nothing and then all of a sudden I'll get like the messages going going so if I'm just randomly looking at the screen that's that's why hello from Taipei Taiwan hello what incidences did you have in Toronto well no I I mean I don't mean to say that oh I felt super unsafe in Toronto I'm just saying that Toronto has you know enough crime being a big city as any big city does it's just we become more accustomed to the places we live in and we don't think, you know, that anything terrible could happen there. But then suddenly everywhere else is somehow worse. Like, it's not. Hello, Louis from Peru. I was in Peru, my God. How long ago was that? 12 years. It's a long time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, so yeah, my car got stolen in Sask, so there, that's a crime. That was unfortunate. Hello from Turkey. Where are you going next? Um, I mean, uh, after I'm done here, like uh, with my road trip, I'm going back to Plovdiv because I need to drop off the car. And then after that, I'm going to go to Sofia again, and I'm just going to chill there for probably like five or six days because uh, I have so many videos to edit for you guys so I'll do that and then I think I'll do that Rila Lakes um, road trip probably before I leave. <laughs> Prasant says my wife feels safer in downtown Toronto than any American towns. Yeah and I mean I'm not, not to hate on America in saying that I'm just saying that America you know has a population of like 350 60 million I, I don't know what it is but it's like they have big cities they're gonna have crime especially when you know all this like political and social unrest is going on so it's it's just silly to think that in North America we don't have crime oh Daryl asked does Misha assist with editing yes he does he did the last uh, Varna video which if you guys watched was so well done so I'm super proud of him for uh, the work that he's done and I think the next video that he's going to do is probably going to be the Rila Lakes one because this whole road trip section I have a specific vision for what I want so uh yeah uh Michael do you see any evidence of closed businesses there due to COVID you know here in Bulgaria I don't know for sure because you know sometimes you'll just see like abandoned buildings but I don't know if they were abandoned or um, you know if they closed in this time period but in Greece I definitely saw some uh, restaurants that were closed due to COVID that you know maybe were still in business but just had to be closed because with Greece they had um, some stricter regulations when it comes to restaurants so I would like look on Google find a restaurant I like get there and it would say sorry we're due a close due to COVID because they didn't have like a patio or something so I think um, probably, honestly, 
uh, North America has had stricter restrictions on that sort of thing than Europe. So probably in North America, we've had more closed businesses. What's your favorite city in Canada? Calgary, Toronto for school. I mean, I've never went to university per se, but Toronto is still my favorite city, definitely. Um, will you ever settle down, get married and have children one day? Um, well, yeah, but I'm not gonna give this up. I mean, I would never wanna get married to somebody who just wants to like, I don't know, stay in one place, do a nine to five, just have kids. Like I'm never gonna do that, most likely. I mean, never say never, but most likely no for me. <laughs> but um, yeah, I think if it happens, that would be great. But I definitely would marry someone who has a similar, you know, sort of lifestyle, loves traveling, unorthodox sort of life like I have. Like, I, I, I don't work with people who <laughs> aren't <laughs> similar to me in that way. That's like oil and water. <laughs> um, somebody asks, how do I afford all these trips? Well, this. This is my job. This is what I do. Thanks to you guys. <laughs> uh, who is Misha? People keep on mentioning him. Misha is my cousin uh, from Ukraine. He's 17 years old. He's still in uh, high school, and he's like a super talented, smart kid, so uh, he helps me with uh, editing. Um, oh yeah, somebody said to go to Pier and oh, I don't know if I'm going to do it because like from Rila, it's another like 200 kilometers. I, I will just stay in Bulgaria for the full three months <laughs> if I'm going to see everything, but I think I have to keep uh, moving on at some point, sadly. Uh, greetings from Greece. Hello. Okay, guys. Well, we are getting kind of like to the end of town here. So let me flip the camera. Jesper, will you consider showcasing cities in Taiwan? Absolutely. I've heard very good things about Taiwan. So yeah, let's walk up this way a little bit more. And then I think, uh, we're eight minutes away from being an hour long stream. So I think let's end there. So if you guys have any questions, please ask them in the next eight minutes. Oh, Pirin is 60 kilometers from Rila. Well, that's interesting. Why did my, my GPS for some reason told me that it was 200 when I typed in Pirin, but maybe that's just like the top outskirt of it. I'll have to look into that again, because if it was less, that would be great. Oh, you guys look. There's some love lockets. <laughs> What's the time in Bulgaria? Well, I guess it'd be almost 6.30, 6.30 p.m. I don't think this bridge is in business anymore. <laughs> Doesn't look safe. <laughs> Next country is North Macedonia, most likely. I actually tried to book a ticket online today but uh, <laughs> you can't, <laughs> so I guess I'm gonna have to go in person uh, when I get to Sofia. Aw, from Daryl, thank you so much. Thank you for the support, I appreciate it. Oh, my mom's here, Alicia, спасибо за эфир, целую, целую тебя. Oh, you know what guys, you know what I forgot to do? I was gonna take you guys on one of those like, um, like side streets with the houses. Maybe I should actually do that instead of going to the end. Okay, so I wasn't gonna live stream in here anyway, but this is like a really old, beautiful church. Um, but you know, I'm not gonna freaking live stream in a church. <laughs> but you know, one, one, one interesting thing to see here in uh, Shirokalaka if you guys come down. But yeah, this is kind of just the outskirts of the city that's the direction that I came into the city from so now we're gonna go back this way and we're gonna go walk up by some local houses hopefully we don't confuse or freak people out too much <laughs> okay somebody said Macedonians don't like to be called North Macedonians so I'm very confused because I was calling it Macedonia when I first had the idea of going there. Then people told me it's offensive to call it Macedonia and not North Macedonia. So 
somebody please explain to me what is the politically correct way to talk about what is labeled in, you know, the Canadian travel guide as a country as North Macedonia. Is it just Macedonia? I'm very confused. <laughs> yeah, Viva says, Elena, the country is called North Macedonia. But then somebody was saying that people there themselves don't want to be called North Macedonia. Because honestly, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not trying to be offensive. I just don't know. <laughs> There's already a Macedonia in Northern Greece politics. Oh, okay. So yeah, maybe that's it. Um, all right. While you guys send me answers about that, <laughs> I'm going to flip the camera. I'm just so impressed by all the wood piles. I don't know about you guys, but like that takes a lot of work. <laughs> My dad <laughs> chops wood and I know how long that takes him. <laughs> this place is definitely coming down. Wonder how long it's been here. Thank you so much for all your answers with the situation because, yeah, I'll, I'll have to look into that because I never mean to offend people. Like, I guess I'm just, you know, when I offend somebody, I'm just saying it because I guess it's ignorance or I don't know, but I will have to look at, try and look into it. But then again, almost always in life, no matter if you try and be politically correct, somebody is still going to be <laughs> offended because we're not all going to have the same views. Yeah, look at these houses, right? Thank you for coming out, Dublin TV. I appreciate it. <laughs> yeah, it all depends who you talk to about who's going to be offended with what words. This, if I'm not mistaken, maybe you guys, if you're from Bulgaria, can tell me. But I think a few... Um, different countries have this where these are kind of like obituaries to people, you know, who lived in the town and to kind of keep their memory. So I actually think that's pretty cool. <laughs> no, Daryl, I don't think it's most wanted. Most of these people are over 70. <laughs> There's a little gnome up there. You see him? <laughs> See, this house right here looks new. That's a new build, actually. I haven't seen many like that. Or unless they just redid it very well. Is that a public road that you're on? Well, I guess it's a public road. It's pro oh, we have a little friend. Not very happy I'm in his hood. <laughs> oh, thank you so much, Michelle. He is not happy. He is not having it. <laughs> yeah, isn't this beautiful? Do you like to ski during the winter? Uh, well, I mainly snowboard, actually. I love to snowboard, but I started out skiing, so I assume I'd still remember how to do it, but if given the opportunity, I would much rather snowboard. Uh, Mario asks, what do you like most about visiting other countries? Probably just that kind of level level of uncertainty and not knowing what you're going to find. Because, you know, if you just spend every day of your life in the same sort of surroundings, it's hard to be surprised. But with traveling, you really never know what you're going to get. So I'd probably say that that's my favorite thing. It's actually eerily quiet. I like feel my voice reverberating. <laughs> now in Crete, the heat is unbearable. And at the same moment, I see you wearing winter clothes. Well, yeah, I imagine Greece will uh, still have some very sunny weather being that much more south. Are you going to stream from Plovdiv? 
no I'm not because I was already there and just had so much work that I had to do that I didn't get a chance but um I definitely would love to come back here again and Plovdiv would be my top city so maybe the next time I come I would do that Oh, somebody's backing up. Yeah, it's actually so hard to turn around in these kind of little alleys. You guys should have seen the places that I was like <laughs> having to move inch by inch to get turned around yesterday. And Sophia, you can do skiing and snowboarding in Vitosha. Yeah, that actually would be super cute. I don't know actually where I'm going to end up for sure for December and January in those months, but I definitely would uh, love to get some snowboarding in this year. Satellite dishes for television? Um, I think it's television and um, like certain kinds of cell service if I'm not mistaken. Are there wine yards in Bulgaria? Yes, there are actually. There's um, uh, there's a, there's a winery that I really like. I think it's called Mitov Brothers. Bulgarians, please correct me if that's not the name, but or Mirnov Brothers, something like that. I've had their wine multiple times. It's a Bulgarian brand, and it was super good. But I'm actually not sure which area of the country it's in. Hello from New Jersey. What do locals do for a living? That is a good question. I would honestly like to know that. But like I said before, I think probably most of the jobs around here would have to do with like manual labor. Because there's people who are like doing the roads, fixing the sidewalks in all these towns, just to upkeep these types of places, you know? Nicholas asks, what's my favorite alcoholic beverage? Um, probably wine wine or beer. Uh, I like certain kind of cocktails, but it's definitely not the thing that I get the most often. Okay, guys, I think we are gonna wind down here. So, um, any last questions? Any last things you absolutely want to know about small towns in Bulgaria or any kind of travel stuff? in general let me know i probably will do um another live stream before i leave Bulga oh from rahul i didn't see if you wrote anything but i see a super sticker thank you so much thank you thank you for coming out um was i oh yeah so i'm gonna do one more live stream before i leave um bulgaria so yeah probably towards the end of the month we'll have another one hope to see you guys there and uh, probably around the 20th or so I'm going to be heading to North Macedonia if restrictions are still open to me so then we're going to live stream from there that'll be very exciting I think what the heck what the heck is happening here <laughs> have a great time in Bulgaria Lina. thank you so much Try wine Melnik. Mavrud is an excellent wine. Oh, thank you guys. You're giving me some fantastic suggestions here. I think tonight I'm probably going to get a nice glass of red wine. I'm going to go to that um, restaurant I really like that has like all the grilled food and stuff. And uh, that will be my last supper in Shiroka Laka for the time being. <laughs> what will I have for supper? veggies, probably chicken. I have been eating, you know, a little bit of meat here. Um, and they have like amazing bread here. So I'm definitely going to get some bread. <laughs> okay, awesome. Thank you guys so much truly for coming out today. It has been a wonderful little tour of this lovely little town i hope you enjoyed it and i really hope that uh, you guys will consider coming to bulgaria because it's awesome and uh, as i said in the beginning of the video i think it is just one of those places that isn't talked about enough so hey maybe you can even spread the word yourself that if somebody's you know thinking about where should they go and 
they have a Canadian passport, they can absolutely, you know, come here and have a wonderful time. So I hope you guys enjoyed this live stream. Thank you so much for all of your support. Thank you for coming out. Thank you for all the super chats and stickers. I truly appreciate it. And it really helps me, you know, to make all of this possible. So thank you guys so much. I'm sending you so much love and I will see you in the next live stream in a couple of weeks. Bye guys.